Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Parker Nierenstein. This is Vehicle Virgins, and today McLaren has graciously invited me to come drive the new 570S Spider. Puts me in a bit of a predicament as one of my best friends owns a 570S, street speed 717, and being my friend, you're supposed to kind of give him a little bit of crap. But it turns out the 570S is actually a brilliant car, so let's go check it out. I have reviewed a 570S, a 570S GT, and the Vorsteiner version, but I haven't yet been able to drop the top and experience that open air vibe. I'm excited, let's head there. Good morning, Ariana, best camera car of all time. You're dirty, you need a bath. Here we go, a bunch of 570S spiders. So McLaren has given me free range with this 570S spider for the next three hours. Let's take it out to some good roads and see how it is. Today I'm driving the McLaren 570S spider. McLaren's entry-level sport series car that rivals the likes of the R8 V10 as well as the Porsche Turbo S. And even above that is the Ultimate Series with what was the P1 and that has now been replaced with the McLaren Senna. That's actually a two-part replacement. We've got the Senna, the track-focused lightweight beast that has no compromises. And then we have the BP23, the Bespoke Project 2. That's going to be McLaren's Ultimate GT car with a super fast top speed and likely the rival to the Bugatti Chiron. The 570S Spider will cost you 20 grand more than the coupe, $208,000. It also weighs 101 more pounds than the coupe, but I have a feeling that all that is justified by the way it drives. For one, 101 pounds is actually incredibly light for the convertible variant compared to the coupe. Really, all it is is just an electric motor to actuate the hardtop convertible. You lose zero structural rigidity as compared to the coupe because the actual monocell itself weighs just 176 pounds. That's less than me unfortunately. Let's start with the way that it looks. The LED lights are very similar to the McLaren logo. It's a little bit pinched in the front, but the looks have grown on me immensely. Obviously, we have the signature butterfly doors. Come around the side here. Now, the Spider actually has some different interior options. We've got this brilliant perforated leather that looks great juxtaposed against the black. You'll notice there's no massive rear wing on the back of the 570S. That's because the 570 in the Sport Series is not about maximum downforce. It is about maximum fun. And today, we're going to try to experience as much as that as possible. So behind me sits a 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V8 making 562 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque. But McLaren's biggest advantage over almost every supercar today is its weight. This, as a convertible, only weighs 3,300 pounds. That's lighter than most coupe sports cars. Let's take its competitors for an example. The Porsche Turbo S Cabriolet, 3,700 pounds. The Audi R8 V10 Spider, 3,700 pounds. And trust me, through the corners, you feel that 400 pound difference. Another stark contrast to its competitors is McLaren's decision to stay with hydraulic steering. That's an incredibly rare thing these days, especially with fuel economy standards going through the roof. It's crazy to think, but the reason some manufacturers have switched to electronic power steering actually has to do with fuel economy. Well, not so in the McLaren's 570S. We've got hydraulic steering, and that means the communication through the wheel is absolutely brilliant. I love the shape of the 570S steering wheel and all McLarens in general. The best part about driving a McLaren, and it sounds dumb, is the driving experience. Sure, it looks wild, it's very fast, but as a motorsports enthusiast, at the end of the day, the most joy you're getting is when you're pushing the car hard through the turns. And in the 570S, you have this surreal confidence because you can feel what's going on. Despite being a rear wheel drive car, it really does feel like you can throw this thing through the turns hard. Now the suspension setup of the Sport Series cars like the 570S is different than the Super Series. We've got conventional double wishbone suspension and adaptive dampers as well as anti-roll bars. On the 720S and the 650S before it, we have proactive chassis control. The proactive chassis control actually eliminates the need for conventional anti-roll bars. We have these adaptive dampers that are linked to gas accumulators that are able to adjust and react to the road conditions significantly better than standard suspension. That means that something like the 720S, while it has just as minimal body roll as the 570S, actually rides a lot smoother in normal day-to-day -day conditions. 
So how much slower is the Spider than the Coupe? Well, it turns out not at all. Zero to 60 happens in a blisteringly fast 3.2 seconds for a rear wheel drive car. That's incredibly impressive. Note its competitors have faster zero to 60 times, but they are all wheel drive. Zero to 124 miles an hour happens in 9.4 seconds, which yet again is incredibly impressive. Wow, yep, that is fast. <laughs> How about top speed? Surely that's suffered. I mean, something has to be compromised, right? Given that it is a spider. Well, not really. Top speed, 204 miles an hour, which is identical to the coupe. And you can go 195 miles an hour with the top down. If you can go 195 miles an hour with the top down, all power to you. I think I'll leave that for someone else. Like all McLarens, we have two switches to control the dynamics of the car. On the left, we have the handling toggle. That changes the suspension characteristics. Right now, I'm in sport. Let's bump it up to track, see if it gets a little stiffer. Despite having conventional springs, you still have adjustability in terms of the suspension stiffness. Now, on the right, you have the powertrain toggle. You can go between normal, sport, and track. The last thing I've ever wanted in a McLaren is additional visibility. Now, let's talk about that. A lot of cars suffer from horrible, horrible visibility. Not so in McLarens. We've got massive visibility out of the front windscreen. We also have great visibility out of the sides and the rear has one of the biggest windows of any modern day supercar. Speaking of this rear window, yeah, we can actually put that down with a toggle here in the center console. This way we can hear that V8 just a little bit better without actually having to put the top down. Wow, that actually makes a massive difference. The amount of mechanical grip that the 570S has is pretty staggering. This is rear wheel drive, but honestly, it's pretty hard to get the tail to slide. Obviously, I've got traction control still on, but... <laughs> A big problem I had with the 12C and the 650S was poor backup camera graphics, but they fixed that in the 570S. Check this out. We've actually got decent graphics and as you turn the steering wheel, the guidelines move for you. Now the paddle shifters, like all McLarens, have a rocker feature where the right paddle is actually connected to the left, so you can go up or down with either paddle. The Bowers and Wilkins speaker themselves are actually made out of Kevlar. Bowers and Wilkins has worked carefully with McLaren to develop both a great sounding system as well as an incredibly light weight system at the same time. Obviously, weight savings is huge with McLaren, and the fact that they even take that into consideration with the speaker system is incredible. These bucket seats are very comfortable. They also are quite supportive as well, and they're good looking. I love this center stripe here down the middle, as well as the perforated design. The multimedia system in McLarens get a lot of flack, but it's not actually that bad. The home button doesn't look like a home, it looks like a McLaren logo. Click that, it goes back to the center screen. It's all touch screen, so we've got Sirius XM, back right there, sound, climate control, touch screen there, let's make it low because it is super hot, navigation right there. The graphics leave something to be desired, but it's not that difficult to use. Now this is the key. You can get a carbon fiber backing. I like the shape of it. Pretty high quality and you can even color match it to your car. Let's go ahead and pop the trunk. Click this button here. There's no secondary release, so all you do is just lift up the hood. Tons of space. I mean, this slider is pretty large and it's able to fit inside of the front trunk of the McLaren. You could take this to the airport and take a bag that you'd normally check inside of the front of the McLaren. And that is not something you can do in the likes of the Audi R8 V10. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up now that we have the top down. Oh, I've been having a blast with the 570S, guys. So in order to actually activate the individual toggles for the handling and powertrain, you do have to click the active button located in the center of the two. We're going to switch it into track and track now. Pull the right paddle to put it in first gear. Parking brake automatically disengages. The turning radius in this car is fantastic compared to its competitors, also because it's rear wheel drive. Oh, yeah. You can definitely hear that V8 <laughs> a lot better with the top down. 
Now it's a bit noisy in here with the top off as far as wind noise is concerned, but being able to see the sky ahead of you and hear that V8 clear way more than makes up for any sort of wind noise. Got a really fun road coming up here. Interestingly enough, with the top up, this car is 20% quieter than the McLaren 650S Spider was. How's that for advancements? Honestly, this entire review could be a compilation of me just smiling while driving this around turns. It's blisteringly fast in a straight line, but more than that, it's just so fun to minorly turn the steering wheel and have it rip around the corner with so much grip. Of course, we've got standard carbon ceramic brakes, which take a decent amount of force to depress initially, but once you're firmly on them, they're confident they stop the car very, very fast. You're able to activate the top at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and do that now. Windows go down a little bit. Top comes up. I love the way that looks. And here we go. Now the top's up, and because of that mono cell too, you have all the structural rigidity of a coupe, you just get that option of taking the top off. Now, the mono cell two, it's a variation of the mono cell one, which was in the 650S. This is actually smaller, lighter, and easier to get into. The sills are not quite as wide as on the 650S. This car, very, very easy to get into for a supercar. <laughs> that blow off valve. Downshifts are so fast. The seven speed double clutch gearbox it's staggering how fast it shifts. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put on a point of view camera because, well, there's only one way to show you exactly what the 570S Spider is like to drive, and that's by putting on my point of view camera and showing you first person. Right now, we are on Decker Canyon, which is an incredibly technical section of road, perfect for exhibiting how good the McLaren 570S is around tight turns. The smallest inputs result in so much turning. We're in track mode in the suspension and the car does ride very harsh, but not too much to be upsetting. The combination of the gearbox as well as the steering feel is absolutely magnificent. Oh, I love the way the 570S drives. Overall thoughts so far, handling absolutely incredible because this is so light because it's rear wheel drive it feels absolutely at home in some of the most technical roads in los angeles the steering weight is absolutely perfect it just feels so rewarding to drive things i don't really like about the car the 3.8 liter twin turbo v8 doesn't sound nearly as good as the audi r8 v10 although it does sound a heck of a lot better than what comes in the porsche turbo overall there's no question i would prefer this over a 911 turbo s cabriolet well, that concludes my incredible time with the McLaren 570S Spider. In summary, it handles like a Porsche, it looks like a Lamborghini, and it's priced like an Audi. For a $200,000 convertible, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. Special thanks to McLaren Auto for providing the car. I had an absolute blast. I look forward to seeing you guys next video.